Thank you, Mr. Chairman, my friend. Uh, we may have a couple of points of disagreement on this bill, but, <laughs> but we will remain friends. <laughs> Welcome, Administrator McCarthy. Uh, this being your first hearing in front of uh, this subcommittee, uh, where uh, uh, we want you to know that we great, re greatly respect your dedication to public service and that of your staff, particularly taking on this role which is uh, about as difficult a role as any uh, in the entire administration. But you have a long record of uh, protecting the public's health and the environment, which is presumed to be a, a nonpartisan objective. Um, and you also worked for then Governor Mitt Romney. Uh, so I would trust that this would be a nonpartisan non-contentious hearing. Uh, I understand uh, you, uh, you did come from the air regulatory side of the EPA, but uh, uh, I uh, suspect that we're going to spend a considerable amount of time on EPA's water regulations uh, since they were issued just this past uh, Tuesday uh, that will govern the federal jurisdiction of water. Uh, these are rules that have been a long time coming and that I do support and I appreciate the fact that you have taken the initiative to do what has needed to be done for a very long time. I also want to congratulate you for uh, listening to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle and actually issuing a proposed rule instead of just guidance. We often heard complaints that the guidance skirted an open process afforded by rulemaking. We heard those uh, on the floor of the House just yesterday. Uh, so hopefully that complaint is now off the table. Um, I'm sure I don't have to remind you that EPA has done more than its share of deficit reduction. Uh, its budget has been reduced from uh, $10 billion in 2010 to 8.2 in uh, FY14. Uh, it's disturbing that EPA would be the first in line for additional spending reductions and that your request would be $7.9 billion this year with all of the environmental challenges that we have. Uh, I share the chairman's concern about the deterioration of our aged water infrastructure. Uh, so I wonder if we shouldn't have OMB up here in front of the subcommittee so that uh, we could better understand the rationale of the administration in continuing to gut state revolving funds and to pro propose further staffing reductions uh, to 1,500 full-time equivalents, 200 less than you'll have on board this year. I do appreciate your request to add over $35 million for federal and state air quality management, but we've seen what has happened to those requests in the past. The reductions you put forward are mostly accepted, and the increases are denied. So I appreciate your fiscally responsible request but I question uh, that the ramifications that it will have for the environment. And invariably, year after year, when, when you propose cutting something, that's accepted. When you propose increasing something, uh, it's rejected. But your mission remains as important as ever. While we debate over climate change in Congress, uh, I think we should bear in mind uh, Ronald Reagan and his leadership on getting the Montreal Protocol done with other world leaders. President Reagan had a conservative, uh, a clear, and a successful record on deregulation. But he was spurred to action by the discovery of the hole in the ozone. And while the Montreal Protocol was meant to save the ozone layer, there are new reports now that the treaty may have been integral in slowing global warming since some of the same chemicals caused both the hole in the ozone and global warming. Uh, so um, uh, again, we have a good example of uh, the kind of leadership that has come to the fore when necessary. 
um, uh, facing the, 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 uh, the facts uh, of uh, environmental degradation. The World Health Organization concluded that in 2012, around 7 million people died as a result of air pollution exposure. Uh, we've made improvements since the Clean Air Act amendments of the 1990s, but there is so much more to do to reduce emissions of particulate matter and mercury. Now, uh, I tried, as uh, my friend Mr. Simpson is well aware, to establish kind of a tradition of quoting uh, Republican presidents like Abraham Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt and Richard Nixon on the need to protect the environment. But it does, hasn't done a whit of good. <laughs> it's cause, well, I, look at the, look at the I bills. Uh, you listen, but you don't, uh, you know, you know. <laughs> Anyways, it really doesn't seem to have produced much in the way of dividends. So I'm going to suspend this uh, practice, even though I have a great quote from Rachel Carson. You really want the quote from, okay. Uh, what's that, Mr. Chairman? Silent Spring. Si well, it, yeah, the silence. The, the chairman uh, clearly has read Rachel Carson, but she said that we now stand where two roads diverge, but unlike the roads in Robert Frost's familiar poem, they are not equally fair. The road we have been long traveling is deceptively easy, a smooth superhighway on which we progress with great speed, but at its end lies disaster. The other fork on the road the one less traveled by offers our last, our only chance to reach a destination that assures the preservation of the earth. The point being, this is going to be tough. These regulations are going to be tough. I know you've gotten uh, an enormous amount of uh, pushback in your travels around the country, uh, but uh, the road less traveled is the one that we need to choose. So I thank you uh, for your service and look forward to your uh, hearing your testimony and uh, working with you. Thank you, Administrator.